What is going on guys, Victor here, and I got a pretty amazing video for you guys today. We got a black tip shark, catch, clean, cook, caught from the beach. I'm gonna show you guys how to catch them, how to clean them, how to cook them, all in this video. And this video means a lot to me because I grew up land-based shark fishing, hence the name Land Shark Outdoors. Now, before you guys put in your two cents, I know these videos get a lot of controversy, especially because people have a soft spot in their heart for sharks. But please keep in mind, this is 100% legal. I'm gonna post all the regulations and stuff in the description box below. And black tips are actually very plentiful in our part of the world. Without further ado, hope you guys enjoy this video. So we rolled up to the beach and I thought that our best chances of catching a shark would be at night. If you guys wanted more land-based shark videos and why not combine it with the catch clean cook. So this is what we got going on. We're after black tip shark. So right now is actually the black tip migration. And basically what it is is thousands upon thousands of black tips and spinner sharks will migrate down the coast and they kind of congregate in like the Palm Beach area, Stewart area, all along Southeast Florida in huge schools. And it's really cool. I've actually got some drone footage of it in the past. And they're literally feet off the beach. I'm talking 10, 15 feet sometimes, depending on the tide. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna cast to these on spinner, on big spinning rods, 12 footers and such. I have a uh, sliding weight right here, like a Sputnik style. And then here's the thing that a lot of people don't know. You actually don't need a lot of wire to catch uh, smaller sharks like black tips. This is only about a foot and a half. Must that demon circle? Well, let's get our bait out. This is a freshly caught Bonita slab that actually Ricky caught earlier. You guys are gonna see Ricky in a second. He's the one who invited me to this beach. Don't need a very big bait, just like that. Send it out. All right guys, and we're fishing. It's literally all there is to it. Bait is out basically as far as I can cast it. And I just loosen the drag on the spinner, pull tight, and hopefully in about five minutes this thing is gonna be screaming. And I'm gonna put two rods out just to maximize our chances. And yeah, and I'm very confident in this bait. Fresh Bonita slab doesn't get any better. All right guys, we are hooked up. I was getting a little bit worried because it was a while before um, we got this hit. This fish charged the beach. Just as, like I told you, just as far as I can cast it. And I can't cast this thing that far. And we're, go we're on. Look at this. What, uh, what uh, uh, 400. Okay, all right, that's fine, that's fine. No, get I in here, get in here, Ricky. When I grab it. Get in here, Ricky. This is sick. This nice is one. the man. This is my bottle, my buddy Pickle Ricky. Follow him on, on Instagram. I'll have it uh, on the screen here. <laughs> Tippy Chew, baby. Ricky goes, bro, they're at the beach. You gotta come here. That's it. And he was not wrong. You guys have no idea how much fun this is. The fact that you can come out here at night, cast a bait from the beach, and catch a shark is unreal. And so, if you see the rod and the reel, sharks give really big, violent head shakes and doing this, trying to toss that hook or whatever's in their mouth because they don't know what's in there. And this fish, I'm pretty sure, jumps. A lot of times these black tips will come clear out of the water. So what I'm doing, what I'm doing right now is that shark does not want to be in that shallow water. They see that shallow water, they feel it, they freak out, they want to go back out. You use the leverage of the wave, you use the power of the waves to bring them in towards you. You know, you pump at the top of the wave and then you let the wave come back in. I've caught big hammerheads, I've caught big bull sharks, I've caught big tiger sharks, and I'll tell you right now, 
This guy right here is the most dangerous shark on the beach when handling. Super agile and fast, and you guys see, they do not want you to get anywhere near them. They can probably bite their own tail. That's that mustad circle hook right in the corner. That's why we like to fish them, because if you are gonna release them, it makes it really easy to take the hook out. So since we're harvesting this, one, harvesting this one, and that hook's in there, I'm just gonna cut it. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna show this on video because I don't want people's stomachs to turn, but the number one thing when processing a shark, you have to bleed it immediately, which I'm gonna make a slit right, up, right above the tail, and then gut it. So you guys will see the shark after that process, and I'll explain more about it. But hey man, we got it done, 15 minutes, we got ourselves a black tip catch clean cook. It's not often that we have a shark here. It's actually the first time. And I had to actually cut the tail fin off in order to get him in the cooler. Now, if you guys come here and look, I didn't want to show the gutting process on video. I am going to explain why I gutted it and blooded immediately. So sharks, a large proportion of their body weight is liver. In the liver, you have chemicals like urea, which get um, converted into ammonia and that's where sharks get that really foul smelling almost urine like smell when they start to die or when they're taken out of the water so the first thing you have to do since sharks have uh, such a big liver that's how they actually regulate their buoyancy and their urea also helps to uh, maintain their os isotonicity okay they don't have air bladders like normal fish you have to gut them and bleed them immediately or all of those chemicals will seep out of the gut cavity and into the skin and you will ruin your meat. So it is really important. As soon as you catch that thing, dispatch it, get rid of the guts, which is what we did. As you guys see, the gut cavity right here is completely open, all of the liver and everything. Once I get them on the flay table, I'll show you how I made that cut and really make sure to ice something like this properly. Now, this little bad boy, uh, this is a little Mustad Demon Circle Hook. I'll have them linked below. And huge shout out to Mustad and Angle, who are big sponsors on this channel. And I actually have coupon codes for both of these companies linked below. 20% off Mustad, 8% off Angle. You gotta support the companies that support us. And get a load of this guy's teeth. So this is a black tip shark and he's only about 70, 80 pounds. But these guys can do some serious damage. And they're actually one of the biggest culprits for shark attacks in Florida because they are so prevalent in the surf. They're not necessarily the most aggressive, but when you take the combination of a lot of people at the beach and a huge population of sharks, which black tips are really found in the surf, you get a lot of unprovoked shark attacks. So let's get them on the flay table and let's clean this thing up. So here's a little size comparison. This shark's about yay tall. Okay, on the flay table he goes. This is where his anal opening is. And what I did was I took my knife, I went from the anal opening all the way to the throat and I made sure to remove its guts. First thing I'm gonna do with this shark is remove its head. It's gonna make it a lot easier for us to fly. Eight inch Dexter Tiger Edge, it's serrated so it should do a really nice job of removing the head. We're actually gonna start right here behind the gills, okay? And I'm just working around and feeling anything that looks edible and anything that doesn't, like the gills, and any remains, we're going to remove. And this knife, you guys see, is making quick work of this black tip shark. They don't have bones, but they have cartilage, which is going to run right along the center. And you have to have this sharp serrated knife to be able to cut through it. It's pretty intuitive once you go to do it. We are going to harvest the fins because I don't believe in just eating part of the animal. I want to eat the whole animal and get the full experience. So I'm going to cut the fins off as well. So here is one of the pectrins. Now we're going to set the head in the cooler because if you want to, if you want to keep the jaws, the jaws are in the head right there. The shark has a couple more fins. We got the two peck fins, the tail fin, you have your dorsal fin right here, which is basically every single Jaws movie you've ever seen in, in life is this fin right here. That's the one that sticks out of the water. 
Okay, and I'm gonna be using two knives for today's fillet demo. Eight inch uh, wide Dexter, eight inch tiger edge. And we're harvesting all the fins because we don't want any weight. Now, this is how you tell if a shark is a male or female. These are a male's claspers. Now, I've never made shark fin soup before. So as this video posts, if you guys have a recipe or know someone who has made shark fin soup before, I'm very curious to hear your guys' ideas. Please drop a comment below, email me, send me a DM on Instagram at Land Shark Outdoors. I really wanna make a good authentic shark fin soup, feed a bunch of people and show the right way to do it. Here's what I'm gonna do. Just like a swordfish steak, I think I'm gonna fillet it in sections. So I'm gonna take my knife, just go along the edge of the shark and try to feel to where the cartilage is. So they don't have a spine made of bone, they have cartilage. Very firm meat. So we're gonna do this until we get to the center. And I'm just going where my knife takes me. I'm kinda letting that cartilage guide me. And this knife is super sharp, but these things have very tough skin and firm meat. So even with a really sharp knife, you have to put muscle into it. Very tough skin, so tiger edge, serrated, will help us cut right through it. We're gonna do it in sections. Okay, so as you guys see, I can take the tip of my knife and I go down on the other side of the center. And then I can just finish it off like that. There you go your first chunk of black tip so I'm just gonna continue to do this another nice big slab of shark you guys want to take a look so the cartilage sounds just like bone basically kind of like filleting a swordfish highly suggest taking the head off it makes it a lot easier I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side I'm not gonna bore you guys with it but it's basically the same thing I don't know about the bloodline so I'm going to Cut right here along the center. And this is a nine inch Dexter narrow fillet, my favorite knife for skinning. Flexible, super sharp. See, this is the bloodline. I don't think that it's gonna be very good, so I'm taking the bloodline out. This, is, this, if you look at it sideways, this is gonna be a nice steak you could put on the grill. Now to skin it. When I'm skinning it, I'm not gonna try to get as close to the skin as possible. I'm gonna go slightly above it, and I'll show you why in one second. Okay, the, the meat closest to the skin, as you guys see, this is where I left some meat on, it's very bloody. So you can sacrifice a little bit and you're gonna get a better product. Cause I mean, come on, we got a huge animal on our hands anyway. We don't need to sacrifice a tiny little bit of meat. And what I'm gonna do is any bloodline that is left on the filet, we're just gonna trim off and just keep doing this that's why I say, when you're skinning it, leave some of the meat on because the meat closest to the skin is the bloodiest anyway. I got a lot of shark to clean, so I will catch you guys in the kitchen. We're gonna have a big bar barbecue, have a ton of people over, and just so you guys know, the shark is not going to waste. It's gonna feed a ton of people, and that's what I really wanna preach with this video because I don't want you to think we just go out and kill these all the time. This is the first time I've ever killed a shark to eat, ever. So. That's just the two cents, see you guys in the kitchen. This is what we're doing. Barbecue black tip steaks, as well as like a stir fry type dish. So we got two cuts of meat, little cubes, that's gonna go in the wok, and then check these out. You guys, I'm really excited, like super excited to try this. I've eaten a lot of fish, but I think that this is probably the most excited I've ever been about eating something. Cause shark, it's, it's in a class of its own. And you know, it doesn't smell, it's it's very firm. I know that people say it's very firm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little homemade barbecue sauce. I had a can of a can of sliced peaches, I took the syrup, that's gonna go in our barbecue sauce. I'm gonna take ketchup. Now we have some brown sugar. I'm just gonna add all of this brown sugar, whatever was left in this container. <laughs> I don't, I don't try to do exact measurements because I get called out because obviously I'm not good at, at judging. Okay, for some acidity, I'm gonna start off with a little bit of red wine vinegar. 
you've got to have some type of vinegar component in your barbecue sauce. Some Worcestershire. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I don't have any salt in there yet, so I figure why not add some soy. That should provide some salinity, and if we need to salt it up more, we will. Aromatics. We're gonna do a little garlic. A little bit of ginger. This is half of a can of sliced peaches. I minced them into a really, until they're pretty fine. We're gonna add all that in there. Because this is bas a basic barbecue sauce. Has ketchup, some kind of acidity, something sweet. So that's what I'm going by. We're gonna add for dry spices, onion powder. Gotta do garlic powder. Paprika. Now I know normally you're supposed to warm this up let it simmer and, and kind of caramelize and uh, it gets real thick, but we don't have time for that tonight. This was absolutely delicious, not hard to make at all, and lately what I'm gonna start doing with the Catch Clean Cooks is posting the recipes in the description box below if you guys can check it out there. So now we're gonna dump this. I'm not putting any seasoning on the shark itself because you've got the sweetness and the saltiness from the barbecue sauce, and we're just gonna mix it with our hands. Okay, okay, okay. So now we're gonna make like a Kung Pao or just some type of stir fry sauce. As one of the bases, we got unsalted chicken stock. Well, let's do a cup, okay? We're gonna do a cup of that. Sesame oil, rice vinegar, some hoisin, not to be confused with poison, soy. I'm gonna add some sriracha for some heat. Okay, we got a dash of mirin, some sugar, wonderful, seriously, so good, so easy. I think I like my flavors balanced of acidic to sweet. Okay, I have some cornstarch dissolved in cold water we're going to add to thicken up our sauce. Alright, now we're going to work on the marinade for our black tip chunks. We got garlic powder. It's gonna be the only dry seasoning we use in this. Okay, now we're going to add some rice vinegar, some soy, some sesame oil. Okay, now I am gonna add cornstarch to this, but I wanna mix this before so everything is uniformly coated. We're also Assisted by our lovely assistant slash camera woman slash fiance, Brookie Christ with the sugar pour. Keep going, keep going. Okay, good, thank you. Everything's mixed. Now we're gonna add cornstarch until all of our fish mm -hmm. is coated. So we're gonna cook this in the wok first, and then we're gonna add our vegetables. Well, add our vegetables, you guys will see. It's gonna be a good time. Oh, I hate, if you've ever mixed cornstarch, it is not a pleasant feeling, it's like, I like that feeling. Oh, you know the sound when people scratch the nails on the chalkboard? That's the equivalent to doing this with your hands. I think, at least. I like it. Uh oh. Okay. Check it out. Got the black tip all marinated up. Now we're gonna go straight onto the grill grates with the black tip steaks. And we got a special guest, Austin over here. Austin's a subscriber who literally, yesterday, I was putting the black tip in my truck and Austin rolls up in a van. He goes, you need some help with that? And I was like, heck yeah, man. <laughs> Very happy to have him here tonight. It's a good first impression. Yeah. So first thing we're doing, we got some oil, yeah, avocado yeah, right. oil most likely, and, uh, going in our wok. Okay, here is our marinated fish and the cornstarch and everything. So we're gonna have to do this in multiple batches. Okay, so we got our first batch coming off. Alright, we're about to flip. Of 
up top? Sort of. Sort of. We have another one. We have another one. Hey, you know it's good if he's going back for a second one. Whatever remaining barbecue sauce we have left to our shark on the grill. All of the black tip is out of the water. We're gonna put in some oil. We got oil, now we got onions. Mixture of red and orange and yellow bell pepper. Scallions. Red chili. Onions, peppers, scallions all softened up. Now, a ton, a ton of garlic. A ton of ginger. Let's add some peanuts. Now we add, now we add the sauce we made earlier. You see how our sauce has thickened up when I move the, uh, the ladle like that? So now we're gonna add all our fish back in. Look at that. Oh. First in line. <laughs> Who's first, first in line? Always first I'm in line. I'm not ashamed to be first in line, man. Here's what we got going on. Beautiful piece of barbecue black tip. You want two steaks? Sure. Here you get two Love steaks. Hungry. You guys, grab whatever steak you want, and then we have our stir fry. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, does that look good. That energy from everyone, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, baby. Ooh, baby. You guys see this assembly line of people? This is what it's about. One shark feeding all these people, and this is one night. There's still, I'd say, more than half of the meat still in the cooler, which we can have for multiple dinners. So it's not going to waste in case anyone thinks it's going to waste. Don't forget the I, was, I was looking forward to it the moment that he said that. That was the first bite I've ever taken. That was really good. No, no, that was a steak. Out. That was just a steak. You're all missing out. I this is a stir fry he's up. That's the stir fry. Thank you, Vic. Hey, no problem, man. Oh, that's, that's really good. Too. First time having shark, right, Ricky? Yeah, at least black tip wise. I may have had a, a mako before, but stir fry is on point. Is this a is it a peach barbecue sauce? But it's it's so good. Both both types. It's amazing. Surprise! I was surprised Victor never cooked the shark before, but after tasting it, I don't really believe this is his first time. Ooh, thank you. It's phenomenal. You it's delicious, especially the stir fry. It's very good. There we go. Jed, first time having shark, first impressions? It should be served in every restaurant. I don't I don't get it. I really don't. It's phenomenal. This is fantastic. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. So we got some rice, we got some salad, some Texas toast. Back onto it again. Mm -hmm. I'm trying it. I'm just loading myself up here. Oh, it's really hot. I had no idea what to um, like think about it. And the stir fry is amazing. The sauce you did is really good. This seems a little tough. The grill one? Uh-huh. Wow. Good? Mine is blown. Really good. Can I get a fork cut on video? I want to show the people, I want to show you guys what it looks like. The homemade barbecue sauce is really good too. I'm not gonna lie, it has a tough texture. It's not like a mutton snapper or something, you know? It's got a tougher texture, but it's not like tough like chicken even. Really, really good. Megan, what do you think? I'm gonna try it. I'm scared. I told Austin I wasn't gonna try it, but here we go. Here we go. Not bad. There we go. Wouldn't know shark. <laughs> yeah. All right, my buddy Anthony just showed up. A little late to the party. But he's here. 
So first time ever eating shark. First time. It's really good. Really good. Not what you would expect. Not at all. Kind of like chicken. Yeah. Really good. Really good. Good job, buddy. Good job, buddy. Candace, your your plate was empty. <laughs> no, that's a good thing. That's a compliment. It was really good. The kung pao at shark was really good. There we go. Thank you. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and honestly, I really, really enjoyed it. So much so that I think that I'm going to make this an annual thing or semi-annual thing. Go out, harvest a big shark, invite a bunch of friends and family over, and that's what it's all about. And that's what I really wanted to show you guys. We didn't do it just for the views. We didn't do it just to kill it and just try it. It fed a ton of people. Black tip sharks, like I said, they are not endangered far from it. The population in Florida is very healthy. And if you guys have a problem with the regulations, don't take it up with the little guys like us. It's, it's managed at a state and federal level. And they're the ones who dictate the shark stocks. And they're the ones who make laws for fishermen to be able to harvest. And they think that the shark populations are healthy enough in the state, in our waters, that you can go and catch one per person per day. Just think about that for a second, okay? Now I know a lot of you at home and I know I have a lot of fans locally, if you guys have never tried it, it is, it was fun. It, you throw a backyard barbecue, feed a bunch of people, feed your friends and family, but definitely take the, the time to gut them, to bleed them, to ice them properly. And for those of you at home who just watched this for the entertainment value, I hope you guys learned something, I hope I taught you something, and please keep an open mind. I don't know what it is about sharks, but people really have a soft spot in their heart. They don't have a problem with you going out and killing 20 dolphin or, or kingfish or wahoo, but when it comes to sharks, I guess it's just a different feeling, but the fins are still in the cooler. Like I said, I want to do a shark fin soup recipe, so if you guys have a recipe, know someone, anything about shark fin soup, please email me, message me on Instagram, drop a comment below, and I would be more than happy to follow up on that recipe. So I want to thank you guys once again so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know it was a little bit different and get ready for a lot more Catch Clean Cooks. I'll catch you guys in the next one.